Hi, well, I'm Professor Stephen Nesheba, and I uh, want to elaborate a little bit for you on uh, the uh, reversible adiabatic expansion of, a, of, a, of an ideal gas. And uh, namely, uh, the, what I want to get at is uh, figuring out how to express the pressure of, of such a gas uh, as a function of the volume as it, is, as it expands, given that we know that it's going to be following uh, what we call an adiabat, which is a, a, a path through state space um, corresponding to a reversible adiabatic uh, expansion. So here we've got our starting state, uh, it's the, our reference state, pressure, temperature, and volume. It has undergone an expansion, so now it's going to be at some new uh, pressure, uh, temperature, and volume. In an indicator diagram, uh, the idea is that I've got pressure here, volume on this, uh, 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 axis. Um, there might be our reference state, which would be that pressure and that volume and that temperature, the reference uh, state. Since it's undergoing an expansion, we know that the gas is going to cool down. Uh, if it's a reversible process, then we say that it's going to follow this reversible adiabat, okay, and end up on this cooler uh, isotherm. So this would be, you know, T ref, and that would be final temperature, which is cooler than the, than the starting temperature. Now, the um, starting point on this uh, analytically will be um, a result that um, expresses this change in temperature, uh, which uh, uh, rearranged slightly from uh, what you might have seen before. Uh, we said T over T ref is equal to some stuff, and I've just moved the T ref off to the right. So here we have the final temperature, that temperature right there, would be the starting temperature, corresponding to that isotherm, times the ratio V divided by the, the reference volume, all raised to the minus C. And this minus C is, uh, well, the C is what's called the reduced uh, 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 constant volume heat capacity, which would be the actual constant volume heat capacity divided by N times R. So uh, there we have that. and. Um, so how do we uh, how do we get to really what we want here, which is expressing the pressure as a function of volume? Because this is really the temperature as a function of volume. It's not quite what we want. Well, it's easy enough to do. There's a temperature for the ideal gas um, in its final state, which would be PV over NR. There's the temperature for the gas in its initial state, which would be P ref, T ref over NR. Now, because we're assuming that we haven't lost any gas along the way, and gas constant really is a gas constant, those can go away. So that expression now turns into just this one. That PV is that PV, that P ref, V ref is that, and the same thing uh, over there. Um, there's one, uh, one more step that we can do, which um, I'm gonna, just to have it, uh, I wanna have ratios of the pressure, so I'm gonna divide by both sides by P ref, so I get P, rat, P over P ref on that side, and then I'm going to uh, divide by volume on the right side, so I have V ref over V. Um, that would be raised to the 1 power, and then uh, here's V over V ref, uh, which you combine all those terms, and it turns into V ref over V raised to the gamma, where gamma is just uh, uh, defined to be 1 plus 1 over that same C that we started off with. So this is the, uh, that's our final uh, algebraic expression, and it just says the ratio of the final pressure to the new pressure is equal to uh, that quantity. And you can kind of see that um, uh, since the, you know, we're assuming that this is an expansion, that volume is bigger than that volume, and therefore uh, the final pressure is going to be lower than the, than the starting pressure, which you can, you can see from, from there. Okay.